Welcome back to GOT. Today we're going to take a closer look at the Honor Manager V5 and Magic OS 10. A lot of you had some questions. We're going to answer those. Let's get to it. One of the questions that was asked the most is the Magic Desktop. Has it changed? Has it improved? Let's check it out. So basically when I open up the phone, I just take and connect it. I have a connector here that has power to it, goes to a HDMI 4K monitor and that monitor is also powered. So I don't expect for this phone to power a 10 or a 4K machine. It will do a 1080p. Now, if you look here right away, it says it's projecting right there on the phone and you can see it is on the screen and you can use your mouse. Now that is just the standard mirroring, but we don't want it to mirror. We want to actually have a desktop experience. So when you press project here, you can go ahead and select the settings here and we want instead of mirror mode we want to go to what here says desktop mode so i hit desktop mode i like to flip this up when i use it because you adjust the volume actually on the phone itself so when you get playback or whatever you can use that right there to adjust the volume so let's go ahead and just start checking it out and see how it works here first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to open up the youtube app as you can see, there it is, and it starts off in a box. You can actually snap it to the side here if you want, and then you could choose a second app. Let's go ahead and open up Edge on this. Now, this is one improvement. Last time, or with OS 9, it does not utilize the browsers that are available today, although I was able to get Opera browser was the only one, but now I can get Edge to work, so that's great. But here you've got side by side. Look at this, no gap. They're just right there side by side okay and we can go ahead and go to my channel here which is what i like to do that way i don't offend anybody or get any strikes for anything these are my videos you can see right here we'll go ahead and pop up one of the most recent and here's the sound now the sound is actually coming out of the device itself that's full volume it's not so great. Now, I think there is a separate volume control on it, but we're not going to talk about volume on these things today because it just is not very good on these portable monitors. And if you want to really listen to what you're watching, use a Bluetooth earpiece. So let's go ahead and do a little browsing here. You can go to Amazon and you can see here everything works just great. And can you open up another app? Well, Let's go ahead and open up my mail app. There it is, just goes right at the top. Let's open up a Bible app. Let's open up a photo gallery. Let's do some more. There's my Google Drive opened up right there. And let's see, we can, we can do a few more. Let's go ahead and open up Maps. Let's open up, you can see here, I'm just going here to my pop-up menu. And just so you can see that, the pop-up menu, everything side to side, um, I don't know which I like better. But you can see I can scroll with my mouse to go through the menu. But as we're going through this menu, if you look, there is no Chrome. Chrome is installed on my phone, but there is no option Chrome app here in my app drawer whatsoever. So for some reason, they don't like Chrome and it doesn't seem. Now, Chrome, we know, is a memory hog. So that could be a factor in it. I don't really know. So let's go ahead and open up speed test on here. And let's open up, you know, I, I feel like I can continue to open up apps all day. There's Google Photos. And let's go on, keep opening them up. Let's get my calendar app. That was not my calendar app. Oh, let's open up weather. Why not? Let's open up the weather. Let's go ahead and open up calendar app. So as you can see, I can keep going here. And that's probably enough. There's a bunch of apps opened up in the background. Now, if you want, like I said, you could snap this one to the side and check this out. All the open apps are right there to choose from. So that's how you get your secondary app. You just choose it from the app, open app drawer. So let's go ahead and go Amazon. So you can see here, you've got all your apps right here. And I can go through my calendar. All right, so everything works fully. Now, if you want to, you can go full page with any of them and get out of full page on this one. 
It was a problem before, but it's working really well now. You could just go up here to the top center and you can grab that. Now I just shrank that one down. And let's go ahead and shrink this one down as well. And well, kind of a, a lock up there. So let's, you can go full screen or you can shrink it down. So you've got all these apps open in the background, you know, and you can realign and resize any of them any way you want. But let's go ahead and just put this down here. Let's take another app. See, that one's doing fine. So we can go over here, put it over here. Now, what it won't do is it, it won't snap these things to corners or anything, which would be nice. Let me try it up here at the corner. No, it'll only do half. See? Or if you go up to the center. No, it won't snap full screen going to the center either. So that's just the way it is, I guess. The only snapping you get is to the side. And then it opens up all the app, other apps to choose from. And let's go ahead and go full screen on this. And I get double air scope. See how it takes up the entire screen, which is really nice. And you can go 4K on this one. There we go. And we can go to the quality here. It's playing at 1080 right now. There we go. There's the 4K settings. And of course, it will clear up once it goes. And just to show you, the only way to get out of this app is to go up to the center and either shrink it down, close it, or what have you. So that's it running on here. Now, there is another uh, function that you can do is you can use the mouse on the phone here. See, I'm controlling the mouse right here on my mouse pad. So that's really nice. Now, here's one thing that didn't happen before when I used the Magic desktop on the Honor Magic V5. I could not close the phone and continue to work. So let's see what happens. If I close the phone, will the app still work? Look at that. It's still, nope, it did not. It locked the phone. See, that's, that's not good. That's not cool. You have to unlock the phone in order to get this app to work. So you are running battery down on your phone while you're using this desktop setup. That's not the best scenario if you're traveling, but if you're gonna using a powered monitor, you're most likely gonna have power access to the phone as well. I just don't like the idea of the phone heating up while it's doing this because the screen is on. And I think that could be a reason why it does every now and then have some issues and hiccups. And one of the other questions I had about the Honor Magic V5 is, does it seem to be draining battery faster with the Quest 10? I don't think so. A matter of fact, if anything, it's performing a little bit better. So I don't seem to be having that issue and it's very quick, very responsive. So people were asking me about the liquid glass here on the phone. As you can see here, everything looks real translucent, very like the iPhone and all respects. And I actually do like it. I think it looks really cool, making everything nice and clear. So I do like it. Now, the way you can set it up, if you don't have it on your phone already and you have the OS 10, is you just pinch the phone, you go to settings right here, and there it is, transparency mode. And you can turn it off or on. So if I turn it off, you can see here, when I bring this down, see there, it's all great. It's, it's just like the Honor Magic V3 in that respect. So pinch, go to settings, turn on transparency mode, and you can adjust how much transparency you want on it, as you can see there. I like it to be as transparent as I want. And then you can set up your dual screens to be the same, or you can have them separately if you want. I like the dual screen on the front to be full. And then, of course, you've got your layout. None of this has really changed from the Honor Magic V3. Now, another question I got was about the dynamic island. You can see it's on because I'm doing a screen recording. So I'm going to go ahead and stop that screen recording and then show you by doing close-ups here. You can see right here the dynamic island is off, but I have if I have something playing in the background, let me turn the volumes down. Let's say music here, I like playing pop music here. You see, there's the dynamic island at work. Now, if I turn the phone off, you can see it displays right here on the phone when you turn it on, and you can actually tap this and see you control right here from your lock screen. You can adjust the volume. You can change songs whatever you want to do here and see the dynamic island is up there. It's not really necessary because you have the app down here. But once you open up your phone, the dynamic island is still there. And if you go full screen on this, so you open it up, it goes 
you can see it's still going. And you can just press on it at any time to open up what you want. Now, let's say I pause this song. Dynamic Island stays there. And if I click you turn off the phone, this is the question I had uh, for my last video is, see, it's not there, but once I press on this, there's a dynamic island showing up. It's not doing anything. I don't know why it's showing up there because this control is down here. So I'm not sure why they have that dynamic island opening up when you do that. And let's turn off the music and close this app completely. Close that. As a matter of fact, let's just close that app. Let's just close all apps. Now, Dynamic Island is turned off. Turn off the phone. Tap it. See, it opened up. I don't know why it's opening up. Uh, it just seems to be doing that. But once you open up the phone, it goes away. I don't have an explanation for that. So the viewer that asked why the Dynamic Island was open, I really don't know. As far as using this phone, I haven't felt any glitches whatsoever with this new OS. And you might have heard me in another video. I said the OS 9 seemed a little glitchy and was ready for an update. It's probably because some of the patches or updates that it had in the meantime or gave us some of these features were making it glitchy. But now that we have the OS 10, everything seems to be working really well. And I'm really enjoying the phone even more. And then another feature to this, diving in a little deeper, is you have a nice menu here on your camera, whether you're using photos or videos. And if you press that up here, it's a bunch of dots right here. Okay. And then you have the menu to make a lot of adjustments right there on the screen where it used to be. You had to open up the full on menu, which where is the settings menu now? Right there. You had to open up the settings menu and go through it like this to check your different options and features, which I didn't care for. So now you have it right there on the screen by clicking these dots. See there, you got all those features right there. You can turn grid on and off. So I really do like that. And whether you're using the photos or the camera, you got it right there. And then if it's on the outside screen here, you can see same thing, except they're right here. And you can just utilize them and change them. I really like that because that's quick access to all these different settings when you're out in the wild using your phone. And if you want to change, turn off different settings, you got it right there, quick and easy. So that covers all the questions I had so far. If you have any more questions about the OS 10, go ahead and leave them down in the comments. If you want to see my first look in comparison with the OS 9, check out this video here. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on future contents. Till next time, have a wonderful day.